JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 1st. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian session Tuesday. It lost the most ground versus NOC, GBP and SEC in that order, while the only currency against which the greenback did not slide and instead traded virtually and changed was the Swiss franc. Although the slide in the dollar suggests a risk on trading environment, the overall performance in the FX world paints a blurry picture with regards uh, to the matter. Thus, in order to clear things up, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, EU shares uh, traded in negative waters, with uh, Deutsche Bank being one of the top decliners after, uh, Wall Street Journal, uh, after, Wall, after Wall Street Journal reported that uh, the Fed told uh, the bank it was failing to address uh, shortcomings in its anti-money laundering, anti -money laundering uh, controls. Markets in, uh, in the UK and the US uh, stayed closed due to holidays, while in Asia today the picture was slightly improved. Even though Japan's Nikkei 225 slid somewhat and China's Shanghai Composite traded virtually unchanged, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KOSPI traded in, uh, in the green. Overall, we believe that market participants remain on the edge of their seats on how central bankers interpret the recent surge in inflation and how they may adjust their policies. Today, we will get to hear from, uh, we will get to hear from Fed Vice uh, Chair Rand, uh, Randall Qualls and Fed Board, Board uh, Governor uh, Leil Brainard. And uh, it would be very interesting to hear what they have to say after the core PC index, the Fed's favored inflation metric, surged to 3.1% year over year from 1.9%. Now, our view this adds more credence to the interpretation that the surge in headline inflation in the US may not be due to transitory factors. Therefore, remarks by Fed policymakers become more important moving ahead. While the new employment report due out on Friday may be even more uh, closely scrutinized than uh, usual. Several officials have already expressed uh, their, desire to, uh, their desire for tapering talks at the upcoming meetings, which in line with a strong uh, employment report may increase the chances for policy normalization sooner than previously thought, and thereby support the US dollar. At the same time, equities are likely to correct lower. Now, Euro traders, uh, excuse me, Euro traders will also keep their gaze locked on data regarding inflation. Today, we get uh, Eurozone's preliminary CPIs uh, for May, with the headline rate expected to rise further to 1.9% year over year from 1.6%, and the HICP, excluding energy and food rate, forecast to have ticked up to 0.9% year over year from 0 0.8%. Although the headline rate is expected to match uh, the ECB's objective of below but close to 2%, the weak underlying inflationary pressures uh, suggest uh, that the improvement in headline inflation may be due to transitory factors. After all, last week, ECB chief economist Philip Lane has pushed against the inflation is back narrative, adding that markets will take uh, years to return to pre-crisis levels and that stimulus is still needed to secure uh, the recovery. On top of that, a week earlier, ECB President Christine Lagarde said that it is essential that monetary and fiscal support are not withdrawn too soon. 
Therefore, we don't expect an increase in headline CPI rate in uh, Eurozone to result a surge in the Euro at the time of the release, although it could add uh, some support, neither to hurt the European equity markets. As uh, for the rest of uh, today's events, during the Asian morning, we had an RBA monetary policy decision with the bank keeping its policy settings untouched and reiterating that at the July meeting, it will consider further bond purchases. There was no major uh, language change in the statement with the only one worth mentioning being the reference to the possibility of significant outbreaks of the coronavirus following the recent cases in Victoria. However, this was offset by saying that uh, this should de diminish as uh, more people get vaccinated. The Aussie slid somewhat at the time of the release and although it may stay somewhat supported against the safe havens in case uh, market sentiment improves, the dovish stance of the RBA may keep it weaker than uh, other risk linked currencies especially against uh, the LUNI, the central bank of which uh, has already tapered its QE program. Speaking about the LUNI, later in the day we get Canada's uh, GDP for uh, the first quarter and uh, March. The annualized quarter-over-quarter uh, -quarter rate for the first three months of 2021 is expected to have declined to 6.6% from 9.6% in the last quarter of 2020. However, the month-over-month -month rate uh, for March is anticipated to have risen to 1% from 0.4%, which following the surge in both the headline and core CPI rates for the month of April is likely to dismiss questions as to whether the Bank of Canada has acted correctly at its latest gathering when it scaled back its uh, QE purchases and thereby support the Canadian dollar. As for the rest of Tuesday's uh, scheduled uh, data releases, we have the final manufacturing PMIs for May from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, which, as it is always the case, are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. The, uh, the ISM uh, manufacturing index for the month is also coming out and expectations are for an unchanged print at uh, 60.7. Staying at elevated levels, the ISM manufacturing index is likely to confirm that the US economy is recovering from the damages of the, of the pandemic at a decent pace, but how the markets will be traded in the near term may depend more on the outcome of Friday's employment report for the, uh, for the month of, um, of, uh, of May. Now, tonight, during the Asian session Wednesday, Australia releases its uh, GDP data for the first quarter with the quarter-over-quarter -quarter rate expected to have declined to 1% from 3.1%, but the year-over-year -year one to have rebounded to 0.2% from minus 1.1%. In our view, although we may see an improvement in the in year-over-year uh, -year terms, a second consecutive slowdown in quarterly terms may add more credence to the RBA's choice to expand its stimulative efforts in July and thereby hurt the Aussie a bit more. Apart from uh, Fed uh, Vice Chair uh, Randall Quarles and Fed Board Governor uh, Lael Brainard, we also have one other uh, speaker on today's agenda and this is Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in uh, learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.